Hello and welcome back to the channel. One Championship keep announcing new fights and I need a haircut. Those are the two main themes for this week. Um, as you will know, if you watch the One on SK podcast, that is the One Championship podcast that I sometimes appear on, on Sports Keto MMA uh, with Nick Atkin. Um, a lot of what's been happening in the world of One Championship. Um, we had the official final confirmation that Stamp is not going to be headlining the return to Denver 1168 at the start of September. Um, we had Roberto Soldich potentially news dropping. Um, we don't know anything too concrete about that, but hopefully some news coming regarding Soldich. But there has been a lot of fight announcements, some that happened during the broadcast for one fight night 24 this past weekend. Um, I don't know whether you guys are too interested in, in me putting up kind of recap videos of those cards. Um, I do tend to, you know, if I do appear on the one on SK podcast, we do tend to go back over them. You can check out the episode. Me and Nick did like an hour and a half um, on Monday. What would that be? Monday the 5th of August. Um, chatting all about all of this news, recapping the card, everything. You can go on the Sports Keeda MMA Originals channel, I believe it is. And uh, click on live and you can rewatch the live stream that we did there. Um, or, you know, follow me and Nick on Twitter or X. And then you can find out when we're going to go live and join us. But either way, I thought I'd uh, put out a little video to talk about some of the fights that have been announced. Starting with this fantastic Friday Fights 81 card. that is still like 50 days away, um, which is crazy. But uh, the card is looking absolutely fantastic already. Um, so we did talk about a couple of these fights already. I put up a video to talk about Takeru and the Black Panther and Hiroki Akimoto versus Elias Enahachi. So you can check out those videos uh, or that video rather on this very channel already. But we've got some other fights to talk about and uh, there are some fights that I'm very excited for and there are some fights that I don't really understand um, throughout the course of this video. But a lot of the positives are here on this Friday Fights 81 card. That is September 27th at Lumpany Stadium. This will be on pay-per-view. It is the quarterly tentpole card. And whilst this card doesn't have a title fight yet, I think the strength of the fights that have been announced is absolutely fantastic. Um, and I'll get to why, because that might come as a shock. Considering some of the things I've already said, we'll get to it. Also worth noting, if you listen to the one on SK podcast, which you absolutely should, so you find out little uh, nuggets of information like this one. Nick said that there's a chance of a title fight being on this card, potentially uh, Pet Gija back in action. So we could still have some more big fights on this card, um, but I did want to get to some of these that have been announced. Um, let's start with... No, we'll go We'll go bottom for the top so far. Sua Black versus Kuabdam. A fantastic fight. This could headline any Friday fights card, then it would be a fantastic headliner. So to have it, you know, this slow down on this card um is phenomenal. You've got Sam A, of course, former champion, former two sport champion, in fact, uh back against Akram Hamidi. That is another big name matchup. Nongo, the former Bantamweight Muay Thai world champion in action against Abati, who has been doing some great work on one championship. He's got three wins in a row on Friday fights. The last one coming at the last tempo card where he stopped Sewer Black in the first round and looked fantastic. So this is a big fight. Nongo obviously returned to the win column last time out with that win against Kulab Dan, where he fought uh, very reserved um, and calculated after being stopped um, in his previous two fights against Haggerty and Carrillo. I think this is a really interesting one. You know, if Nabati can beat Nongo, then, I mean, look at look at Nico Carrillo. He, he beat Nongo and everyone was like, well, this guy is next for the title. Um, so it really is, you know, that kind of stakes when you beat a guy like Nongo. And if he can turn back Cameron Nabati, then I think there's a really good chance for him getting a, a rematch, um, a second shot, reclaiming his gold. Then you have Akimoto versus Zenahachi. Already spoken about this one. Great fight. Love this one. Um, mini featherweight, kick, uh, mini bantamweight kickboxing Grand Prix. Featherweight Grand Prix is a totally different deal that we will talk about in another video, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, great fight. Love that one. Takiru versus Black Panther. Does it make a, a ton of sense? No. But the idea obviously was to have Takiru and Rod Tang in Japan. 
Rod Tang can't make that. He's going to be on Atlanta instead, defending his flyweight Muay Thai title against Jacob Smith in a rematch. So I'm I'm happy that Takiru isn't ha- isn't just waiting for Rod Tang um, and that he is going to fight. I'm sure this will do um, a lot in terms of the pay per view numbers for this card and the ratings that it generates. Having Takiru fight in Lumpini kind of feels a little bit like when you get a really big band and they go and play a small venue for the first time in like 20 years or whatever. You've got Takiru finding Lumini, which is uh, a crazy, crazy thing to imagine a few years ago, but here it is. And then the main event, Superbomb versus Joe Natawa. Um, Of course, this is featherweight Muay Thai. Um, a great fight, right? I'm super excited to see how this one goes. Um, you've got Superbomb. Superbomb is the interim champion right or is that that's in kickboxing isn't it yes of course yeah he's the he's the interim kickboxing champion he won that belt against marat gregorian earlier this year um in a very very good fight and joe now will obviously of course uh just headlined 1167 at the start of june i say just uh, time flies um very very close fight with Tawan chai a lot of people thought he won and of course he is going to be rematching Tawan chai in Atlanta, November 8th, November 8th, is that right? It's November, uh, first, you know, early November um, at the State Farm Arena in Atlanta. I don't understand this booking, to be to be totally honest. For a start, you've got the fact that Joe Nava is going to be fighting at the end of September and he needs to be ready at the start of November to fight Tawan Chai again, which you know is going to be probably another five round uh, back and forth battle between them because their previous two fights have been very, very closely contested. And then you've got, you know, forget about the fact that if Joe Natwick comes through this fight and gets his hand raised, he might have some issues with injuries. He's going to probably need to take a, a week off or maybe two before starting his camp for that next fight, which, yeah, I just don't I, I don't like that idea. There's also, you know, the chance that he just gets badly injured and can't fight anymore in Atlanta. Of course, the Atlanta card does have a lot of title fights on it. So I think they'll be okay without it. But, you know, why book a title fight and then lose it because of your own booking? But then the the the, the, the I think the more likely outcome, because, you know, Joe Natawa could come through this fight without any serious injuries and be able to make the turnaround, is that, Superbon is one of the best strikers in the world. Um, and I'm not saying that Joe Natawa doesn't have a chance of beating him. I think he he does. Joe Natawa has looked fantastic in these fights with Tawan Chai, but I think that most people would pick Superbon as the favorite in this fight. Um, maybe, you know, Joe Natawa slightly more suited to Muay Thai, maybe. But there's a real good chance, I think, that Superbon wins this fight. And then you have Joe Natawa, like five weeks later, challenging for the world title um, when surely it should be a Super Bond Tawan Chai rematch if Super Bond gets the win. Um, I just don't really understand the booking. I'm sure this will be a great fight. I'm looking forward to watching the fight. If this was booked, you know, if they did 1-1-6-7, uh, Smoking Joe has the close fight with Tawan Chai, they do this fight and then whoever wins gets announced to be fighting Tawan Chai in Atlanta, stoked. I'd be super excited either way because you know those fights are going to deliver. I just don't really understand the booking of this to double book Joe Natawa, um when he clearly deserves a third shot at Tawan Chai. Um, feels a little bit like you're going to... Um, he's going to have a knock. He's going to take a knock to his momentum, I think. Even if... I mean, if he beats Superbon, then maybe it adds to it, but he has to beat Superbon and then beat Tao and Chai a few weeks later. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure about this one. Um, the other card that we had announced, this was during the broadcast for One Fight Night 24 that we got this confirmation. It is One Fight Night 25. It goes down October 4th at Lumpini. So, you know, not the week after the Friday fights card, right? Uh, yeah. So busy, busy week that will be. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll get a guest on, um, in the build up to these two cards to, to preview Friday fights and this card. Let me know who you guys want, want me to feature on the channel. If, uh, if, if, if there's somebody that comes to mind, let me know and, uh, we'll try and make it happen. One Fight Night 25 is going to be headlined by Alexi Nicholas or, or Nicola. 
apologies if I get that wrong, taking on Reggie and Urso, uh, a rematch, of course, for the lightweight kickboxing world title. These guys met, um, God, I can't, uh, it was earlier this year, right? Was it one fight night 21, 20, maybe? Might have been, no, it's 21, right? Uh, I, I don't know why I'm trying to guess this, but hey, um, it was a, Interesting fight. Um, a lot of people were expecting Ray and Ursel to come through it, um, you know, fairly easily um, because Alexi Nicholas has had one fight in one championship and he didn't look amazing. But against Ray and Ursel, he was able to secure a knockdown and that ended up proving decisive. There are no draws in one championship. Um, and with Ray and Ursel, despite him winning, you know, if it was scored by round, he won the majority of the rounds. But of course, there was. Uh, a knockdown that ended up evening the score, right? Um, obviously, the knockdown that won him that round, I believe it was round two, um, equals, you know, adds up to, to for Reggie and winning multiple rounds. So, Alexi ends up getting the win there. Reggie wants his belt back. Um, me and Nick did interview him on the one on SK podcast a couple of months ago, and he basically said that October was going to be the date. Um, I believe he got married in between the first fight and this fight, so he had to wait a little bit longer in order to get it booked. Um, great fight. Excited to see this rematch. Excited to see how both men adapt from that first fight. Yeah, super excited. Always a treat to watch Reggie and Ursel in action. Um, and you know this is a this is a big one for him to try and get his uh, his lightweight belt back. So I'm excited. I don't want to be you know just uh, just down on on one championships matchmaking at the moment um, in this video um, because again uh, I think this will be a good fight. But Denise Zamboanga versus uh, Alania Alania ah, God names are not my strong suit at the best of times, let alone today. Uh, Rasahina. I believe is how you pronounce it. Uh, Rasa Heiner could be. I'm not sure. Um, for the interim Atomweight MMA World Championship, let me explain kind of what has gone on here if you are unfamiliar. 1167 was set to be headlined by Stamp Fairtex defending her Atomweight MMA title against Denise Zamboanga. Stamp got injured a couple of weeks out. Um, and so there wasn't, you know, a, the, the fight didn't happen. Denise ended up staying on that particular card. Um, they managed to get her a late notice replacement in Noel Grandjean, which I thought Denise um, won that fight fairly handedly. Um, and I thought the, that was kind of like, you know, confirmation. All right, Denise is still going to be the next title challenger. The issue with that is, is, you know, everybody wants to fight Stamp. She's one of the biggest stars in the promotion. She was obviously set to come back in Denver and go up a weight class to challenge for the strawweight title against Zhang Jingnan, which you would imagine she will want to still do. So it kind of, I, I'm not against the idea of an interim title um, featuring Denise because Denise deserves, I think, some kind of security that she is going to be next to fight Stamp because the fact of the matter is Stamp is going to have a lot of offers on the table, um, especially after taking this time to recover from her injury. The issue is, and this is no slight on Rasahina, um, but the simple fact of the nature is she has fought, uh, she hasn't fought in three years, um, and her last fight was a loss. So she has two fights in one championship. She debuted in February of 2021, where she submitted Stamp Fairtex in MMA. And then later on, they met again in the Grand Prix where Stamp won a split decision at the end of three rounds. And she hasn't fought since then. Not just in one championship, she hasn't fought since then, period. I'm sure there are reasons for that. But to give a interim title shot to a fighter that is coming off of a loss and hasn't fought in three years, admittedly, the fights with Stamp were very close. Stamp is the current champion, so there is a narrative that you can sell there with her wanting to get another shot of Stamp. She's beaten her before. Then the rematch was a split decision. Do a trilogy fight. I get it. But I just don't think that you can make that um, argument over some of the other contenders in the division. The likes of Hamsi Ohi, who was the last person to fight Stamp for the title, um, who, yeah, she got beat by Stamp in September um, when they fought for the vacant title that was uh, vacated by Angela Lee. But 
Hamsi Ohi holds two wins over Denise Zambawanga. Um, the other clear contender that I think is right there, who I think is incredibly deserving of a title shot, is Chihiro Zawada, who has won three fights in this division, looked very good whilst doing it, um, and I think could be a, a star for one championship in the future if she gets the right opportunities. Um, not to say, you know, her fighting style isn't like a stamp or, or even a Denise, really, but she looks fantastic um and is you know le super legit and on a winning streak and deserves a big opportunity so i'm a big fan of this main event this main event is like no brainer booking um not to take the credit away from one championship um i'm glad this is the next fight for both men i'm glad that we're getting it not too long after the first fight um and i'm excited to watch it play out in the main event the co-main event i don't have a problem with an interim title i actually don't mind interim titles um in certain contexts <laughs> we're not going to talk about interim titles that's a that's a slippery slope um i'm happy for denise actually but i just think that this fight um loses some of the stakes um because of who denise is fighting and again it's no slight on Brasahina um because she has reason um to be in this but not right now not after a three-year layoff not after a loss when there are people um who are more deserving of this opportunity i think in this division even if there is a narrative there with stamp what do you guys think of all these fights that have been announced which one is your favorite which one is the one you are most looking forward to um who's your picks for for these big fights let me know in the comments down below leave a like follow me on twitter everything in the description all that good stuff and i will see you all very soon for another video i am sure but until then peace